What's going on, Bay? Today, I'm going to show you how to recreate this really cool animation on OMSC's website. You can see the images are floating around, and then as I move the mouse across the screen, as we get kind of close in proximity to these images, they scale up. We're going to build this today in Webflow with P5.js. Let's get started. Hey there, Web Bay. All right, here's a quick demo of what we'll build. We've got these images just kind of floating around randomly, and as they get closer to the mouse, they expand, and as they get further to, from the mouse, they go away. So we'll give you some options to change these parameters as well, and we'll walk through the code step by step. In Webflow, we've got a div with a class name Hero that's controlling our layout here. It's just set to display flex, vertical, and center so that I can get this title in the center. It's width 100% and a min height of 100 viewport heights with a position set to relative. Now inside of there, I have canvas container. This is position absolute, so it takes up the entire space of the hero parent there. And it's set to cover everything with a Z index of minus one. And this is where our P5JS canvas is going to live. And you can see in the settings here, I've given it a custom attribute wb-element equals canvas container. I'm gonna target that with our code and I'll show you that in a minute. The other thing I have here is a CMS collection with our source images. If I go ahead and expand this, the only thing that I have in there is an image but you can't see it right now because I have hidden this. So let's go ahead and remove that. And now you'll see we have all these images that are here. And then if I click into the image itself and I come over to the settings, we can see that this has a custom attribute of well, wb-image equals image. Okay, go ahead and hide our collection list. So I'm going to hide that again. And then let's just check out the page code. Okay, if we scroll down to the head tag here, we can see that we are loading p5.js with this script. And then I'm just loading a code sandbox right here. When I publish this as a clonable, I'll put the code down here in the before closing body tag. So we can go ahead and save and publish. All right, for our code here, we're starting off with a bunch of variables that I'm initializing. We have a variable, my images. This is an empty array that will store references to all the images that we want to use. And we'll grab those from our CMS in the Webflow project. Next, we have the scale factor. This is a constant, so here I'm using 15%. You could change this if you want them to go bigger or smaller. And then we have a distance factor. This is determining how close our mouse needs to be to the center of the image for the scaling to take effect. And then we have max velocity here. You can change this to change how fast the images float around the screen. Now, coming down just a little bit here, we have three functions, preload, setup, and draw. These are available to us through P5.js. Preload is the function that runs first before setup and draw, and we'll use this to load our images into P5. Next, in setup, we will create our canvas and put it inside of that canvas that we have in Webflow, and then in draw, we will update our images. I've also defined a JavaScript class called myImage, and the constructor to initialize a new instance of myImage just takes the image variable and then assigns it to this.image. There's gonna be more happening in here, which we'll get to in just a second. The myImage class has three functions, update scale, update and display. Update scale is going to calculate a distance between the center point and mouse position. It will then use that distance to update a scale factor that we will assign to each image. Next we have update. This is the one that's going to help us move the image across the screen. So we're going to add a velocity value to our position and then we'll check if the image is close to the left or right or top or bottom edges and reverse it if we need to. Last we'll display. This will use the P5 image method to draw the image on the screen. And then last down here I have a little ease out court function which I just grabbed by doing a Google search. And we're going to use that to control how the image scales up and down. All right, within our preload function, we're going to get references to those images using the query selector all method that lives on the document object. And then we're going to pass that string that defines our custom attribute. Next, we'll define a for loop from zero to images.length. And within that for loop, we will call the p5 load image function. This function gets the source attribute from the image at that index. And then it also takes a callback function to run once that image has loaded. Within that callback function, so between these two curly brackets here, we're going to say my images, remember that was defined up here as an empty array and we're going to push that image to it. And we're going to use the new keyword to instantiate a new instance of the my image class, which will pass the image that we got up here in our function parameter. Down in the setup function, we will get our canvas container here using the query selector method as well, passing that string that we defined in Webflow. We'll also call p5's create canvas function and pass it the window width and window height values so that it's as large as our screen and we'll store that in a variable called canvas. And now we can set the canvas parent using p5's parent function that lives on the canvas object by passing the canvas container as the parameter to that. Now, inside of our draw function, we're going to every frame draw a background with a value of 255, which is just short for white, essentially. And then we will loop through all of our images that are in that my images array. Now, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to call our update scale function and pass it the mouse X and mouse Y values. Then we're going to want to call update to make sure that the image updates to its new location. And then we're going to want to call the display function to actually draw the image on the screen. Now in our my image class, we can start defining all the things that we need our image to track for itself. Very first thing we will do is actually define a max width and max height 
which is just the image width times the scale factor. We will also want to store the value that this image needs to scale. So we'll call that this dot scale amount. And we're pretty much setting it to zero here. But if you do define it as zero exactly, then you'll have some weird division and multiplication errors. So we're gonna set it to 0 0.0001. Next, we'll initialize the X and Y positions. We'll use the random function in P5 and we'll get a random value between max width divided by two and window width minus max width divided by two. And here we're treating X and Y as the center position in the image, not the top left, which is default, but you'll see later in the display function how we're treating X and Y as the center coordinate. Now our image also needs a velocity, so we'll define X velocity and Y velocity, and we'll take random values between negative max velocity and positive max velocity for each of those. In our update scale function, we wanna calculate the distance between the center point and the mouse position. So let's start by using the dist function in P5, and we'll pass it four coordinates, mouse X, mouse Y, and the image X and the image Y right here. We can also define a maximum effective distance, which we'll just take the window width here times that distance factor constant that we defined at the top of our code. We'll wanna normalize this value to be between zero and one. So we'll call math.min and we'll divide distance by our max distance. And if one is the minimum value here, then we'll just pull that and store that in normalized distance. Now that we have our normalized distance value, and don't forget that we defined our easing function down here, ease out court, we can go ahead and assign our scale amount. So we'll call this dot scale amount equals, and we'll use the math.max function and pass it two parameters. The scale factor times our easing function of one minus normalized distance and 0 0.0001. So if this expression here evaluates to something larger than zero, we'll just use that. Otherwise, if it evaluates to zero, then we'll use 0 0.0001 instead so that we don't break anything here. In our update function, we wanna calculate half of the scaled image dimensions, which is just dividing the max width and the max height by two. Next, we'll update our image position based on the velocity it was defined in the constructor. And now we just need to check our canvas edges and reverse the velocity if the image gets to one of the edges. So for the left and right edges, we're going to check if the X position is less than half max width is less than or equal to zero, or we're going to say if that X position plus half max width is greater than our width. And all we're going to do there is take the X velocity and multiply it by negative one. For our top and bottom edges, we're going to do pretty much the exact same thing, but we're gonna be referencing the Y coordinate this time and half max height instead of half max width. And we'll do the same thing, but with our Y velocity inside of that conditional. For the display function, first we need to calculate the scaled width and height, and we'll do that by taking this dot image dot width times our scale amount. So we're getting that and storing that in scaled width and scaled height. Then we'll calculate the top left corner position to center the image. So we're gonna get top left X equals this dot X minus scaled width divided by two. And we'll do the same for our Y value. And then we'll draw the image centered around this dot X and this dot Y. This helps us to scale the image from the center. Remember I mentioned that normally P5 references items from the top left. We wanna do it this way so that when we scale the image, it looks like it's growing from the center and not from the top left. So we use the P5 image function and the very first parameter is this dot image. The second one is the X coordinate. The third one is the Y coordinate. This fourth one is the width. And this last one is the height. So we can go ahead and save now. And if we come to our site, we can see that we've got some images floating around. Some are going quite slowly. And right as it hits the top there, it reverses. And this one up here hits the top and reverses. We've got some down here, again, slower. This cloud picture is slower and I'm just moving the mouse around and causing these to scale all over the place. All right, so here is some footage of me taken with a hidden camera in my own home. Thanks, Heather. I wasn't going to share it, but they say vulnerability makes you more friends and it's a sign of strength as a male. Anyways, you should probably just subscribe so that I can be happy.